Ryan and I had a great opportunity not too long ago to share a dive trip with Josh Lieberman. He is a wildlife photographer and I was picking his brain and watching him as he was filming. I learned so much. I took his information and applied it when we were diving. So this is what you're seeing. And now he has some points that he's gonna share with all of you about what he looks for when he is filming underwater. For me, the first thing I do when I drop down onto a dive site is look for any sort of textures, anywhere I can put that lens that's gonna create an image that is surprising or really bring somebody into the photo. And one of the best ways to do that is with depth and with creating kind of layers in the image, right? So you're creating a foreground, a midground, and a background. I'm looking for places where I can get my body and then, you know, the camera lens below the reef almost. That perspective, I think, creates much more compelling images. There's three things that I always keep in mind with every, every dive, really every underwater photo, and those three things are get close, shoot up, and have the eye of your subject in focus. Getting close underwater um, is important because there's a lot of things floating through the water that are gonna make it blurry, that your strobes or your video light is gonna pick up on. So if you minimize the amount of those particulates between you and your subject, you're often gonna have a better and a more clear photo. The second one is gonna be to shoot up. If you put that fish above the island or that squid or that turtle or that whale they inherently have this power and this feeling of power in the image so i always try to paint them in a powerful light and shoot up at them and then the third thing is to always get the eye in focus by giving somebody somewhere to look in your photos your viewers are automatically going to zone in to that eye immediately and that kind of gives them a frame of reference for then taking in the rest of your image so if you always have the eye in focus, you always have your subject a little bit above the eye line and you always get close to your subject, those three things combined are going to give you some really incredible and empowering images. So my three tips. Your three tips. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you powerful. so much, yeah. Josh. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been yeah. fun. Thanks, Nicole. So this is the Sony A7S II camera. This is a mirrorless camera. It's an SLR. This camera is only 12 megapixels, but each one of those megapixels is really big. So for video, this is one of the best low light consumer cameras ever. And the lens I have on here is a 16 to 35 millimeter, right? So 16, it's really wide, but it's not so wide that you're getting that fisheye effect. So there's not gonna be really much distortion, but you can still capture a really wide image. Actually, these are the, the Kraken Hydra 5000 S pluses, and these are video lights. So these aren't controlled by the camera, these are controlled manually. And these are really great because as you can see, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on in there. So we have um, a flood light, we have a beam light, we have a red light for night diving, and we also have a UV light. The housing is specific for the camera, right? Yeah, the housing is very specific to the camera and it really has to do with the button layout. Right, so this one, it says on here the model. So this is A7 II, A7 R2, A7 F, and A7 S2. And you know, most of the Ike Light housings are built the same, the same materials and the same everything. It all comes down to the proportions and the button layout. So the dome port is what houses the lens. And there's all sorts of ports you can get. The two main ones are the, the flat ports and the dome ports. I like a dome port because it allows me to take those really cool split shots. And a lot of the photography and videography I do is mostly at the surface and there's a lot happening above and below the surface and I wanna capture all of that in one image. I've kind of jerry-rigged on the bottom here these weights. It's very important in these housings that you have them uh, at a neutral buoyancy. Otherwise, they're gonna be yanking you up or yanking you down. And especially when you're shooting video, you want it to be nice and stable. You want it to just kind of glide through the water. So this will just slide on in. So then I'll pop that on the back. You always want to do your bottom two simultaneously. I'm gonna pop the top. Perfect. A lot of people with dive housings, what they'll do is they'll, they'll seal it up, they'll get down there, and then they basically are staring at it, waiting to see if it's gonna fill with water or not. And that's really stressful and it can ruin your dive. 
So what this does is this actually sucks out all of the air and it pressurizes it. That's gonna do two things. One is I can see on this gauge if there's a leak in the system. And two, it makes it so everything is sucked together and then literally take off all of the latches and I still can't get the housing to open. Josh's gear can be pretty expensive and what I shot with was the GoPro Hero 9. So you've got your high-end equipment. You can also go with something like uh, the newer GoPro Hero 9 or there's a company called Acaso sent us their Endless Summer V50 Pro to try out and see what we thought. And it's actually, for the low price point, it's a pretty cool camera. It's got stabilization, not as perfect as the GoPro, and it takes pretty decent shots. They're not as vibrant as other cameras. One thing about this camera is it can be waterproof, but just like this, the way it comes, and it's little holder, it is not waterproof and I almost made the mistake of filming above water and then I was just about to dunk it underwater and I would have destroyed the camera. It does come with waterproof housing. It also comes with a ton of accessories. Another thing is I always like to keep a camera ready to grab and go. And I tried that a couple of times with the Acaso. I had the batteries charged 100%, stuck the battery in the camera. The camera sat there for three or four days. I went and grabbed the camera and the battery was already dead. So for an entry level camera and it's a low price point, it's worth checking out. And the links will be down below uh, if you wanna check out their website. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Next time you go out and you grab your camera, keep those three points in mind that Josh talks about when he's looking for that shot. And I bet you'll be surprised with what you come out with.